Hi guys, um, today I went to the last major orchid show in New South Wales, in Sydney. So um, these are my purchases for today. I didn't want to go overboard, so I have a few things only, but I really make sure that I don't miss my flasks. And it was just last night that I discovered there is a vendor from Taiwan. I didn't know that um, what I knew is that my friend from Thailand is coming to sell some flasks but at the moment she doesn't have the flasks that I want that's fair enough but I forced myself to come today for the Taiwan vendor so from him guys I bought three flasks okay so as you know guys, I love Buffy Pedalum flasks. So I bought three flasks and he gave me 10% discount. He actually made a mistake in his calculations. So that's uh, 150, 150 and 125. That's this is uh, 300, 425. So 425 minus 10%, he asks me for 289. That just got me confused and I told him to do his calculations again he did it again and still 289 but I told him you're gonna lose money if you make me pay 289 because it's not right he did it again and he got it right and um, he, was, he apologized to me and I said you don't have to apologize to me I'm not doing it for myself I'm doing it for you so okay guys so he's a nice guy i got his um calling card so anyway i mean i don't really want to agree to him when he says i'll pay 289 because i was thinking you know the importing of these flasks is not easy and the costs involve there's a lot of cost involved to do this one. If I have to buy this through a third person, guys, this is going to be a lot more expensive. This micranthum here, as you can see, they are actually, you can see them, they are very big for um, a flask. Um, a flask seedlings. They are really healthy. I think if you buy this from a third person, it's probably going to cost you maybe $250, $275 each. So I'm really happy that it's $150 and 10% discount. This is the good thing about um, attending orchid shows and buying direct from the sellers, from the overseas vendors, is you can save a lot. So during the pandemic, it's not possible but slowly slowly it's coming back again and i think this is a better way for me to recoup my losses as well um you know as if you are growing um orchids from flasks it is not a guarantee that 100 percent of the seedlings will survive so so it's it's a great way to um save if you go to orchid shows, I would really recommend it. And there's a lot of um, varieties. So this this seller doesn't just um, grow puffs, but any type of orchids, guys. So yeah, so I just bought three from him and I'm really happy. So I got two micranthums there. Buffy Pedalum Micranthum Var Ibernium. Ibernium is a type where the pouch is pure white. So look at this, guys. They are really, really huge for a flask a seedling. Sometimes the flask seedlings can be super tiny, like just millimeter in size. And um, it makes you feel like they don't have a higher chances of survival if you don't replay them so um i also got here by the way guys i also um this one is a bit smaller i also um ordered one from my middleman 
he is currently growing the seedlings for me i, I got a feeling 100 percent it's the same source the the media and the look of the plants are the same so i paid gosh i think i paid 195 for that one because uh, it's from a middleman and this one is 125 minus 10 percent you see guys how much you can save there you go and plus you get the plants um in very good condition so so my middleman is growing the other one for me i bought this one guys this is called puffy pedalum armeniacum this is an uncommon um, parvicepalum type, you know, the pure yellow um, orchid. They are not readily available. And you can see how very tiny they are. Not super, super tiny, but compared to the micranthum, they are quite small. But they look like they're going to survive. I probably will give them... Um, three to four more months in the flask we are planning to go overseas in january so i don't think i want to deflask them now because my mother-in-law is going to look after my greenhouse and she's not really a plant person so i don't want to expect too much from her and don't want to give her so much job so so this from one vendor, two micranthums, Ivornium, Ivornium, and Armeniacum. As I have mentioned, I love Puffy Pedalum, and especially the Parvi types. And I have another flask here, guys, from another seller, local sellers. But I believe this flask comes from Taiwan. This is... I don't really know how to pronounce this one, guys. Uh, okay, so Oceoclades morophila. So this is a cousin of. I made a video of this one. This one here, guys. If this is familiar to you, they call this one the reptile like or snake skin like um orchid because if you look at the color it looks like a reptile skin so this is called it's pretty much the same oceoclades i don't know how you say that one but this one is called the spathulifera while this one here is called the morophila so if you look at it it is green with some markings in it while this one is brown with the markings of it so i have this already quite common actually now in sydney or australia but this one is um I think it is new haven't seen this before so i'm interested to own some of them and would be nice to sell some of them one day so these are i believe cousins oh oh oh, oh gosh, sorry guys how do you say this one oceoclades morphila oceoclades patholifera so okay guys but this one i didn't buy this from the orchid shower i just showed this to you for comparison all right <clears throat> i got here from one seller from south australia called nicky sleeper he's an old man um he mostly um sells puffy pedalum and sometimes i buy from some mature um, plants from him this is this kind of unique actually i like this one my quantum cross vietnamese 
it's just $48 and it's got really nice root system this is how he sells his plants guys like this um, it is um, although not all of them the flowering plants they are in their pots but the non flowering they just put them in uh, plastic bags like this one it's really nice because you can see the root system of the plant this one is my crown some cross vietnamese is called Westerner vietnam love so look at this guys very nice um i love barbie sepalum even not in flower they just got these gorgeous green markings in them really cool so excited to repot this i don't know if i'll have the time today yeah let's see okay guys this is uh, a group from a grower in western australia so i just bought one plant of him today this is called jo uh, choice hasegawa so i think a lot of you have a choice hasegawa it is a there it is a cross of Emersoniae and Delinatiae. Another Parvi cross, another primary hybrid. So very excited. I have haven't bought this one from a flask. I already bought two from him before from another orchid shower. And I just added one. So nice um it's a nice size and uh, i'm a fan of a pragmipedium i don't have much left with uh pragmipedium flasks at the moment so i think i would prefer to just buy a seedlings this one is super small but to me it looks like it's gonna survive this is a unique um frag it is a pragmipedium apollo cross by Syrianum. so that's the for for our boy Syrian, uh sorry this is the apollo here and this this is the boy or bow Syrianum. so it would be interesting to see the outcome of this one i have a frog apollo before that i bought as a seedling and now it's so big already oh and guys, it's, uh, it is, I don't always see uh, carnivorous plants on an orchid show. So I thought I'm gonna take the opportunity to buy myself some unique plants. Look at this one, guys. Huge. Okay. <laughs> when I saw this in the orchid show, it looks like a grass or a weed but guys this is really good if you have fungus nuts in your greenhouse you know those tiny small tiny black winged insect that's annoying and although they said those are not harmful but the larvae that they produce eats the roots of your orchids and stunts the growth so i thought of buying this one so as you can see guys i don't know if i can it. This actually um, makes uh, small winged insects to be like stuck to the plant. So there's, look at this one guys. I think this one, I don't know if I can show it so clearly. There. Okay, so. Okay, one minute. this one here guys i don't know there that's an insect there tiny green insect it looks like dead to me it's been there since i bought the the plant today once the once the insects gets trapped in this tiny hairs that's it they're stuck there and you can see here too you can see those black color there they are actually very tiny insects that was stuck to the plant. It's really cool. 
and look at this one guys this is like that <laughs> i don't know i just call this one a trumpet um trumpet carnivorous blend look at this one this is actually not expensive guys i think this might be i'm not 100 percent sure must be 30 dollars only or 40 that's very very cheap for the size of the plant this one is giant name of this one guys is drosera binata so look looks like there's a flowers in there it's really cool scenic i don't know if um other countries also have this or is this like native to australia i'm not really sure but there is another carnivorous plant here called um, cephalotus um, they are like tiny nepenthes plants that just with their pictures just stuck to the soil and really like tubby tubby type i have a few before but they just kind of really go downhill i have one left but it hasn't given as much um pictures to it and i got another one here guys look at this one guys it's so cute this is also another form of a picture plant these are the pictures here guys it's so unique look at this one guys it's a picture here it is hairy it kind of it looks actually the it looks like it's got a like how you, like pores like a big pores with hairs it's really cute and this is the that's the entrance in there of the the, the picture and i bought this one because i thought this is so cute and it got a flower to see the flower guys i had a smell of the flower that's turned it it's really weird it looks like a like a baby face like a sleeping baby <laughs> it's got like a, a fruity scent but it's it's like um it's hard to explain guys it smells a bit like peachy kind of smell or like a pear like a light pear smell cute pink uh, flower so unique so i thought i'm gonna buy myself uh two carnivorous this time so just to help me by the way i uh, forgot to mention they actually help control um especially the pitcher plant they control insects especially like ants and cockroaches I don't really want to use like um chemical insecticide in my greenhouse so um i just realized that this guy catches um cockroaches as some um, i went to my greenhouse one night and realized that they actually produce um kind of like a nectar at night that i think cockroaches loves because they're sweet and then it probably like leads the cockroaches to the entrance of the pitcher and so they are trapped once you get inside i don't think there's any way you can go up so okay guys i think i made my video long sorry for that so not really much today guys so this is going to be the last major orchid show for the year and um so looking forward to deflask the the plants or the seedlings in the flasks and find a nice space in my greenhouse for my nepenthes okay that's it guys um thank you for watching and bye bye